¡Vamos! Crystal Theater, how are you guys doing tonight? Make some noise for the finals. Every single one of the comedians on the stage, we've all worked really hard to be here tonight, and we're really excited to get to perform for all of you. Do we have any Harry Potter fans in the audience? I love asking that, because it always gets a better reaction than any of my actual jokes. <laughs> I'm a big Harry Potter fan myself, and like uh, most fans, I have wasted countless hours, like really way too much time, on trying to figure out which of the four Hogwarts houses I would be sorted into. And I finally came to a conclusion, I'd be in Hufflepuff, and I'd be there for one very simple reason. Hufflepuff is the stoner house of Hogwarts. <laughs> If I'm being honest with myself, you know, I'm not brave enough to be in Gryffindor. I'm not smart enough for Ravenclaw. I'm definitely not ambiguously evil enough for Slytherin. But what I am is I am completely willing to just sit on a couch with a few good friends and do nothing for hours but stare at the fire. <laughs> Plus, you know, Hufflepuff, we've got a few traits that we're really well known for. We make really good friends, and we do that because we're very caring. We like to share with people. And how many stoners do you know that don't always try to share their weed with people. <laughs> We're also very loyal, which means that when Professor McGonagall finds me smoking a joint in the bathroom, I'm not telling her where I got it. I'll tell you guys, though, it was uh, Fred and George. Tom Sugarbush sent you. <laughs> and uh, finally, we're very hard workers. And I have never seen anybody work as hard as this stoner who ran out of weed on April 19th. <laughs> or as we like to call it in the Hufflepuff common room, 420 Eve. <laughs> and just in case you're wondering, you celebrate 420 Eve very similarly to how you celebrate Christmas Eve. You bake cookies to give to your bearded friends. <laughs> Plus, you know, we have Professor Sprout as the head of house. She's the herbology professor. And you know she's growing some damn fine herb in those greenhouses. Not to mention a few magic mushrooms, probably. And hell, it even has Puff right there in the name. Hufflepuff. Our house song is Hufflepuff the Magic Badger. So, just in case any of you are confused, I did not actually attend Hogwarts. I know I feel like I've got a lot of insider information, but I spent most of my childhood uh, going to a school that was run by the Lutheran Church. So if you want your kids to turn out like me, you know where to send them. And this, this school was a joke. Our science books had Bible quotes in them and taught creationism and had pictures of people riding dinosaurs in our science books. And I tell you this so that you can truly appreciate how much worse the sex ed program was. Because <laughs> when we got to seventh grade, they split the class into boys and girls and sent us into separate rooms. And I have no idea what they told the girls, but they spent the next three hours telling the boys that from this point forward, girls are going to get a little irrational about once a month. <laughs> that was our sex ed. There was no discussion about how babies are made, how STDs are spread, how to prevent either of those things. Our sex ed was three straight hours of bitches be crazy. <laughs> and my dad didn't do a whole lot better. My dad's idea of giving me the sex talk was sitting me down when I was 13 and saying, son, if you can't keep it in your pants, keep it in your hand. <laughs> So by the time I got to high school, public school, finally, I knew next to nothing about sex. And what little I did know, I learned by reading erotic Harry Potter fan fiction. <laughs> did you guys know that wands aren't just for casting spells? <laughs> so I'm 15 years old, a freshman in high school, and I finally get my first girlfriend. And she wants to have sex with me. She wants us to lose our virginities together. I'm really excited, and she tells me, bring protection. Don't you dare show up without protection. Here's the thing. I had no idea what that meant. So I hired a bodyguard. I did not lose my virginity that night. Uh, last I heard, the two of them are expecting their second child soon. I did eventually lose my virginity in high school, though. I lost my virginity in the most spectacular way possible. Seriously, you guys all should have been there. In fact, looking out at this audience, I think a few of you may have been there. 
I lost my virginity to a bisexual woman in her girlfriend's bed. I don't have a punchline for this. I just like bragging about it. I haven't been doing too well recently, though. I've really been uh, striking out on that front. So I finally just gave up and uh, joined an online dating service, which is ridiculous. Like, they ask you these questions to help you find better matches. But the thing about these questions is they're all fucking insane. They are not questions that would ever come up on a first date. They're things like, which aspect of the salmon life cycle best currently represents your stage in life? <laughs> or, if during the best lovemaking of your life, your partner asked you to squeal like a dolphin, would you do it? <laughs> But my very favorite question I found is, how does the idea of being slapped really hard in the face during sex make you feel? And I love this question because of the answers they give you. These are all multiple choice questions. The first answer is horrified. I get it, that's me, I'm not into that. I don't judge. The next answer is aroused, and I understand some people, that's their thing. According to my research, a lot of students at Hogwarts are really into that. <laughs> And I figure right there, you've got all your bases covered. You don't need any more answers. Who is going to give you anything else? But they kept going. The next answer they gave is indifferent. <laughs> I don't know all of you. But I am very confident in saying that if any one of you is having sex tonight and your partner says, hey, do you mind if I slap you really fucking hard in the face right now? Your answer is not going to be, I don't care either way. <laughs> No, you're either going to say, wait right there, let me get the ball gag, or you're going to say, get the fuck out of my Subaru, right? Because this is Missoula. We're all about peace, love, understanding, and having sex in our Subarus. But don't bring violence into the bedroom or the driver's seat. But then they give you one more answer. The final answer they give you is nostalgic. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, talk about daddy issues. Thank you very much, everybody. I am Sugar Bush, and I will squeal like a dolphin for you.